this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that revival is here, God. We give you praise. Amen. 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 You can do better than that. Amen. Let's give him some praise Hallelujah. in the house. Thank you. Amen. I love singing about revival, but better yet, I love being about revival. I'm going to challenge you. I know when you were singing that, you were doing more than just singing, whether you knew it or not. When we ask Jesus or ask God to send revival, we can't just ask it collectively. You will never experience revival collectively and experience revival individually. When we want revival, then we will see revival. Amen? Can you give him another hand clap of praise? I am thankful. You can be seated if you'd like. I am grateful and thankful for what God is doing in this nation. I don't know if, uh, if you have been paying attention, but God is shifting some things. You can call it what you want. I don't know if we call it shifting or sifting, uh, whatever that looks like, but God is doing a great thing across this nation, a great thing, even in our government buildings. Don't ever be fooled by what you're hearing on the, on the regular media. Don't ever be fooled that God is not still on the throne. He's not still in control. I don't care who else we want to hold up in high esteem. God is still in control, and so we give him glory today. I've just had an excitement in my spirit this this season, I don't even know what season it is, right? But in this season that God has been moving the way he's been moving and we've been seeing revival, experiencing revival, uh, I told you Wednesday night we have seen almost 50 salvations in four weeks from this building, from this, or at least a link from this ministry, and that's the ones that we know about, right? And so we're believing that our online family is receiving the same word spirit uh, as well, and they are calling on the name of Jesus in a mighty way, and so would you make our online family feel welcome this morning? We appreciate you guys being with us. We are so excited that you take time out of your day, whatever day you finally catch this, uh, and just connect with us spiritually today that we all are on the same page. I just get excited about being in the house. Now, if I get to preach, that's a bonus, right? I could have stood there and worshiped the Lord with you guys and they could have just kept singing. I believe that it would have been, uh, we could have left still feeling good, right? But since I'm called to equip the saints, I better do some equipping. Otherwise, we're just going to leave here and say, man, he didn't equip me, but I had a good time for that 30 minutes. I need something to fall back on when all hell breaks loose. And so this morning, the title of my message is When You Know. I think that a lot of times we think that believing in God will make the, the, the difference. It's not the difference maker. There's people that believe in God that are experiencing chaos. People believe in God that are down. There's people believing in God who are in despair. There's people believing in God. And so we talk about believing in God. I've had some friends over the years and over the months even that have said, uh, I invite them to church, and rather than saying I'm not interested or absolutely, they'll say, well, I believe in God. And I'm like, okay, so does that mean you're going to church? I mean, you going to church with me? I just invited you to church. I didn't ask you, right? Aren't we quick? We're quick to just say, I believe something. And that's not a shot to anybody. That's our, unfortunately, that's our society, that they think believing in God is enough. It's not. We need to know God. There's a difference in when you believe and when you know. And so I want to talk about when we know versus when we believe right here in just a minute. But do you remember believing in God and it didn't change a thing, did it? You didn't have peace. You didn't have comfort. You didn't have the comforter. But once you knew God, once you said, I want to know God, I don't want to just believe in him. I want to know him. But there's going to come a day that when we step uh, before the Lord and we're going to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Or we're going to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. The new there, uh, K-N-E-W, is the exact same K-N-E-W that Mary spoke to the angel when she was told that she was going to be with child, and she said, how is that? I've never, I never knew a man. Same new. I never had an intimate relationship with a man, and God's going to say, you never had an intimate relationship with me. You might have believed in me. You might have talked about me. You might have sung about me, but it's when you know. When you know that changes everything. When you know at 3 o'clock in the morning, Right? When anxiety is high, when you know at 3 o'clock in the morning when you get that phone call, when you know it's not going to be enough to believe in God. We're living in a time we need some knowers. I'm all about believers, don't get me wrong. We can tie that up and make it all one, but that's not what I'm taught, God told me to do today, and so we need some knowers. And so it's when you know. We know that God has been good to all of us. 
period. I know that while I was sinning and living uh, outside the will of God and outside uh, in rebellion against him, I know that God was still good to me. Because time and time again, Satan could have taken my life if God had removed his hand of protection. That's the only reason any of us are still here. uh, Satan would have killed us if God would have allowed it. If he could kill you right now, he would kill you right now, but God. And the reason I can say that is because I've been there. I've done that. I've had that midnight hour moment. I've had that moment of conviction. I've had that moment of knowing that had it not been for God, my grandmother praying, people of the church praying, my parents praying, whoever else was praying for me when I was running really hard and really fast, it was, it was because they knew God. I needed some knowers to pray for me, not just believers. I needed some knowers praying for me. That they knew that when they covered me with prayer, that they knew that God that was going to take care of me. Uh, there was a gentleman, he was preaching about uh, uh, if, if Satan could kill you, he would kill you right now, but God has protected you. And after service, a, a young man came up and he said, well, I'm just going to be honest. It may not be that God has protected me yet. It may just mean that Satan hadn't decided to kill me yet. Did y'all process that? God, uh, Satan would kill you if he could, but God has been protecting you. It's not because Satan hadn't decided to kill you. And so the pastor turned it around and he said, well, that, you know, that, you make a good point. Guy's a little shocked. Y'all know them troublemakers, don't you? Guy was a little shocked. And he said, here's the difference in you and me. I'm here by the grace of Jesus, by the grace of God. And you're still here by the grace of Satan. If you really believe that the only reason you're still here is because Satan hadn't decided to kill you yet, then you're on Satan's timeline, but I'm on God's timeline. I think we give our sin and our, the enemy so much credit, don't we? We credit him all day long with our whining and moaning and groaning and complaining and pointing. And <laughs> it, can I tell you something real quick? It takes more energy to moan and groan. It really does. It'll wear you out. I've never gotten tired being happy. I ne- really have But I've gotten tired being in despair, dealing with depression, working through anxiety. I've gotten really tired there, emotionally, physically, mentally. But I've never gotten tired being happy and knowing the Word of God. And so we're going to get to that in Romans chapter, uh, chapter 8 and verse number 26. It says, And we know all things work together for good of them that love God. Isn't that something? And here's the thing about it. He's working all things good. All things good. What kind of things? All things. Yeah. Worst. Yeah. Best. Yeah. All good. I love that how God can roll those bad boys up into a package and you can look 10 years later back over your shoulder and say, look what God done. And you said it collectively, right? Because he worked all things together. And so you look back over your shoulder and say, man, I've had a good life. Look what God's done for me. And they say, what about the time you had cancer? What about the time your kid had a wreck and you didn't think they was going to make it? What about the time when you lost your job? And what about the time? But for whatever reason, the knowers look over their shoulder different. And we can focus on all of that. Or we can get in the Word of God, and when we know the Word of God, and when we understand the Word of God, then we have a, an understanding right here that says, we know all things work together for good of them that love God, and to them who are called according to His purpose. Now, is everybody called to preach? No. Nope. Is everybody called? Yes. We're all called to something. There's a purpose in your life that God has uh, put in you from the moment you were conceived, he had it in mind before you were conceived, and in those days that he began to write about you, before there were any days, he was writing that purpose. I think I'm walking in mine. Have I missed any along the way? I have. I've missed a lot along the way. But my goal is not to miss any. But I'm human, and so I miss some. And so it's not enough to believe, it's enough to know. And so when we know I want to give you a quick thing. I hear people trying to justify their sin all the time, don't you? Giving credit to their sin, justifying their sin, justifying their past, and how they do that. And uh, if you've said this, or if your wife or husband is no elbowing right now, y'all do that in the car. 
Hey, boy, he was talking to you this morning. He sure was talking. I hear people say, if, it had, if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't have done this, I wouldn't be who I am today. I had to go down that bad path to be who I am right now. I, I had to go and, and sin to be who I am right now. I had to go sleep with all those people to be who I am right now, drink all that alcohol, do all those drugs, be that person to become who I am right now. So, you know, that didn't make you who you are right now. Now, if you're still in it, yeah, that's all you got. But if you're a child of God, that's not what made you and who made you who you are. We justify our sin, we prop our sin up, and we talk about how many gallons or how many uh, bush or how many whatever we drank or took, and we, and we say, if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't be who I am right now. I don't believe that for five seconds. The only reason you are who you are right now is because God works all things together for his good, for my good, to those who love the Lord. That's the only reason. We give Satan all this credit. I can tell you, I lived like hell for about five years. I was called to preach at 15, and by the time I was 20, I was done. I lived harder in those five years than most of you did, well, however many years you've got. I decided if I wasn't going to serve God, I was going to be good at not serving God. And in those moments, all that stuff didn't make me who I am. All that stuff would have killed me. All that stuff would have sent me to a devil's hell. All that stuff would have left me in despair. All that stuff would have been more than I could carry, but... When I know, and when you know, and we know that all things work together for good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. My sin, I give it no credit. None. Zip. But we do. Society does. Unfortunately, I'll just throw this out there. Catch it if you want it. The church does. The church gives all that credit. And if we don't give it to ourselves, we speak it over our kids. Well, they're just, they'll just be... You know, you know, that'll make them, that'll make them, you know, that right there, when they're older and they get in church, they'll, hey, listen, that'll make them who they're going to, no. Nah. No, you got to quit patty cake and sin. We got to quit giving credit to it. It's one thing to blame sin. I'll let you do that. But we don't give it any credit. When we decide to justify our sin or anybody else with the same kind of reasoning, we are stepping outside the word of God, acting contrary to the word of God. Why aren't you walking in the fullness of the Lord? Because you think your sin made you who you are. Why haven't I stepped out in ministry? Because you still think your sin made you who you are. You still think your failures defined you. You still think that you had to go through all of that to be who you are. No, nope. all you had to do, whether you went through it or not, was accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and grab the Word of God and get a word from God, a word that's pretty simple if you just want me to just be honest as far as my perspective. And as the way I'm explaining it is pretty elementary that we know that all things work together for good of those who love God. It wasn't working good when we was doing it. But when we got a revelation and began to love God and call on God, we, instead of just being a believer in God while we're out living like hell, we became a knower of God. And so now that there's a difference in believing and knowing, then I'll try my best to leave you alone for a second and not get on anybody's stuff. I said a second. Y'all counting? I guess I gave you five. I gave you five seconds. And so when we get over ourselves and we get over that sin, then we can have an understanding that uh, your sin didn't make you who you are today. Your mistakes didn't make you who you are today. My sin didn't make me who I am today. My sin didn't make me, uh, my mistakes didn't make me who I am. God made me who I am. And through his word and through his promise of his word that I know, I want to talk to you about knowing here in just a second, but I know that all things work for good. How do you know that, Pastor? Because I should have died a long time ago in my sin. I shouldn't have made it home that night. I shouldn't have survived that stuff I was doing I should have never gotten through that time in my life and so I know I I don't just believe God made it I know I know down deep in my knower and you or nobody else or not enough money to convince me otherwise I know and when you know you know and here's the thing and when you know they'll know when you know, they'll know. You'll quit talking about your sin and start talking about your Savior. 
You'll quit talking about your junk and start talking about grace. You'll quit crediting all your past and say, let me tell you what God's doing. He's worked all things together for my good, and all those things I went through should have killed me, but Jesus went to Calvary. Jesus paid the price. He paid the ransom for me, and when the devil tried to kill me, heaven said no. When hell tried to kill me, heaven said no, and I can tell you that God made me who I am today because he worked all things for my good. And so when we grab that, it just changes us. Do you see how I changed? You should have known me. 35 years ago, because 34 years ago, you just saw the new me, not the me you see today, but you'd have, you'd have seen a, you would have seen a new me from what it was a year before, but now I'm a different person. Why? Because now I know I'm not walking in, I don't know if this is the right word to put it, but I'm not walking in milk. I know that I know down deep in my knower. That he took my good, my bad, and my ugly. And the blood of Jesus. And worked all things for my good. I know that if you're here today and you're saved today. He took all your good, your bad, and your ugly. And the blood of Jesus and the grace of God. And made you who you are today. I give no credit. Respectfully, I give no credit to my sin. I don't want to dishonor anybody for thinking that. I'm just telling you when we start to think on the word instead of thinking on our past. It'll change everything about us. They'll say, man, did you get a haircut? Nope. Did you get a facelift? Yep. Yeah, I did. I lifted my face toward the hills from which come of my help. Some of, all of us need a facelift. Need you? That's a message, different one. I'm sorry, I about took off on that. And so let me talk to you about knowing real quick. Let's read Romans 5, verse 1 through 5. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, justified, never sinned. Okay, you got it? When you believed on Christ, when you accepted him as your Savior, you became justified by faith. Just if you'd never sinned, it's all gone, erased, cast as far as the east is from the west, and I can't say that enough. All the ugly, all the bad, all the junk, all the whatevers that you ever done is gone because he works all things for good through the blood of Jesus, through the grace of God, that I am who I am, not because of that mess. If it was important, he would have left it. It's not important to your being. I have never since day one uh, bragged about how much alcohol I could drink prior to Christ. Because that don't define me. How much running I could do. How much whatever I could do. And who all I hung out with. Why? Because I'm not going back there. And every time I talk about it, I go back there. I could give you some Facebook posts of some people that accepted Christ as their Savior, but they never let him cast it as far as the east is from the west. They held on to it, kept it in their pocket, kept talking about it, kept reciting it with their work buddies, kept reciting it with their friends, kept reciting it down at the gas station, and now they're right back in it. Therefore, you've been justified by faith. Who has? The believer has. If you've asked Jesus into your heart, if you said, Father, forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, make me new, and now let's walk this thing out. Walk it out. Then you've been justified by faith, and we have peace. Man, we're just being, look at this. You're justified by faith, and then what do you get? Peace. Peace didn't come from your past. You tried that. Didn't come from the drugs. Didn't come from the alcohol. Didn't come from the sex. It didn't come from the lying. It didn't come from the gossip. It didn't come from the, it didn't come from that. That you have peace with God. That's it. Where will I find peace? Somebody help me find peace. You'll find peace with God in Christ Jesus. So, so now what? Do you really believe that or do you know that? Maybe starting out you can believe it. Can you believe it enough by faith today to accept Christ as your Savior? By the, I can tell you by next week you'll know it. You won't just be believing it. If you walk it out for a week, you'll become a knower and not just a believer. And so it says right here, by whom also we have, been, we have access. Dude, he justified us by faith. He gave us peace in God, and now we have access. Y'all must not be getting it. We got access. He gave us access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. So we get to rejoice about the access because we've been justified by faith. And so when we put it all together, what do we have? 
peace. See, there's a difference in knowing it. When you believe it, you can still wake up and, and all of hell can torment you till the daylight hour. Or the all of hell can try to torment you to the daylight hour and you just went from being a believer to a knower and you roll yourself out of bed and you say, I know where my help comes from. I know in whose name I'm saved by. I know. And then the enemy can't have power over you and control over you. Instead of worrying about how it went last time, let's start focusing on how it's going to go next time. And you kick the devil right out of your bed and kick the devil right out of your house. You kick the devil right out of your marriage and you grab the word of God and say, I'm a knower. Because when I know, I'm different. I walk different. Head up, shoulders back. Not that I'm, not that I'm arrogant, but man, I'm confident. Verse number, verse number three. And not only so, but we glory. Wow. We get to, be, we get to celebrate. We've got peace. We've got access. We're, we're, we're driven by faith, right? We're driven by faith because we've been justified, and now we find ourselves going through hard times, and we glory in tribulations. All hell's broke loose, but I'm still giving him glory. My bank account's empty, but God's still God. I may be sick, but God's still the heal. I, I still believe that God is on the throne. Everything may be in chaos, but God, and I know it. I know it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, guess what? They would have never walked in that furnace believers. They had to go in as knowers. If you're going to face your toughest battles head on, you've got to know. You gotta, and not just know today when things are good. Right, if I can know when things are good, then guess what? I still get to know when things are bad. And when things are bad, I still stand on the Word of God. Now, let's look at this. I love this. It says, knowing. What? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience work is, brings experience. Experience brings hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. I want to talk about knowing real quick, and then we'll talk about patience, and we'll close. To know in both of these instances in uh, Romans 8.28 or in Romans 5.3, to know or the knowing is having knowledge or information. So now you have the information, right? And if you grabbed it, if you held on to it, if you didn't ignore what I've said the last eight minutes, then now you have knowledge. There is a difference. This thing's full of information, but it don't benefit me, right? Until <laughs> I grab it, accept it. Receive it. And so now, having, having knowledge or information, what else? Clear perception or understanding. A fool speaks because he has to say something. A wise man speaks because he has something to say. And my prayer for this message today was that I was the latter and not the former. That you would leave here knowing. How can you leave here knowing? Because now you have information, you've accepted it, it's knowledge, and now you find yourself with a clear perception, a clear understanding. Another definition for the same two words is to be sure of or to be well informed, knowing the faithfulness of God versus believing the faithfulness of God. There's times I just have to know it. Believing's not enough for me. I've got to know it. Because if I, I'm just believing it, then I can tag it to my emotions. And when I'm feeling good, then I believe it. When I'm not feeling good, I don't believe it. But knowing it is not tied to emotions. Knowing it's not tied to your circumstance. Knowing it's not tied to anything else. But when you know it, then all hell can break loose. You're still going to serve him. The addiction can knock on your door. You're still going to serve him. That person can call you or text you again that you turn, turn loose or cut off and you won't be tempted by that because now you're a knower. When I know what the Word of God says, then I stand when all hell breaks loose or when the devil confronts me or when temptation comes my way. That every emotion does not determine my salvation. And so we know down deep in our knower there is a difference. Grab it today because when we know, nothing that happens in our lives will make us doubt God. <laughs> will we understand it? Nah, doubt it. Right? We walk through stuff we don't understand. Just talking to my uncle this week, he don't understand why he's going through what he's going through. We don't understand. Because how can I preach a big pumped up message and have my uncle going through what he's going through? How could he believe that? The only way he could believe it if he's a knower. The only way he can grab it is if he's a knower. 
Because if his emotions are attached, he'll do what Job was told to do and curse God and die. My emotions aren't attached to my salvation. I know that I know that Jesus died at Calvary. Do you know that? I know that I know that he was raised on the third day. Do you know that? If you don't know that, then you don't get any candy at Easter. That's the only way the bunny comes to your house. No. So I know that the tomb is empty. And I know that he ascended into heaven. I know that he sits at the right hand of the Father and prays for me. Oh, my land. Y'all thought... Do you know that? He intercedes for me. When I, when, I, when I don't know what to do, when even though I know I'm still struggling with it, I know that he's praying for me. And if I can't get any of you on the line, I know that he's interceding on my behalf. So do you know? Because when you know, you begin to walk different, stand different, what? Fight different. I want to run back to patience real quick because I, I love this definition. It says that tribulation worketh patience. And no one wants to go through hard times. We just don't, do we? I don't. I don't. You work on your vehicle. That's not tribulation, but oh, my lands. You get under the vehicle and you got that big knuckle buster. Broke off of the, the socket, broke off, came off the top of the nut. I know at least two of you have done that. It's not just, I don't think it's just me. It worketh patience. And instead of hurrying and finishing the job, guess what? I roll back out from under there. I grab my hand like it's going to help it. And I don't look at it. Right? You, you just don't, do you? I can remember building, a, we were remodeling a house to flip and uh, I was working and I was hammering down by the floor joist, and I hammered and hammered, and I hit my knuckle right there. It felt like I swung from South Carolina. I grabbed my hand like that. Guy helping me said, let me see. I said, no. Let me look at it. No. Well, what's it look like? I'm not looking. I think it's going to be all right. And so it worked with patience. Patience right here. Listen to patience. Patience. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay. The capacity, do we have it? Not in ourselves. Do we have the capacity to accept trouble? Do we have the capacity to accept or tolerate suffering? Look, look, look here's the thing. Look, without getting angry or upset. That's what this patience means. It means God's working. It's not always good. It's not always easy. But all through the stuff, God's working patience. Lord, I've prayed for that, but I know you're in control, and it'll be in your... We do all that not only because we're real spiritual. Yeah, and then we leave church. Then you grumble to your spouse all the way home about it. You were so good in the foyer about that. Why am I still hearing this? Y'all ever... Y'all ain't going to say. Y'all do that. And so in Romans, in Romans 8, 28, I think that needs to become an anthem for some of us because we know. That, all, that God works all things for our good. So when we have tribulation, we don't fall apart. So when things come or when things are delayed, we don't get upset. That he's growing us up in Jesus. That we're beginning to step right out of the milk bowl into the pot roast. Right? We're getting ready to step out of the milk and into the meat because now we are knowers. Now we have an idea of what the Word of God says, and I'm closing. So in John chapter 10 and verse number 10, how do I know that God cares? How do I know Jesus cares? Because he said, a thief comes except to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. How do I do that? Believe, right? Is that okay? We start off believing. That's where you believe. You start today. I'm going to start today believing by faith. I'm justified. I have full access. And I know that he works all things for my good. There's a process to becoming a knower. There just is. You got to walk it out. You can't throw in the towel every time something happens. Don't get saved on Sunday and live like hell on Monday. That's not what the word says. We don't play that here. We don't, well, no one should. The church preaches the word, right? Nobody should play that. He said, Should I sin more so that grace can abound more? Is that what he said? 
No. <laughs> I think he may have said it firmer than that. No. We don't play so God's grace can much more abound. We accept God's grace. It doesn't just pardon us, but it gives us the power to overcome our next temptation. It, the Word equips us. The Spirit empowers us through the Word we've been equipped with. That when all hell breaks loose, we don't fall into that temptation again. Because we know that God paid the ransom. We know that Christ paid the ransom. We know that we've been justified by faith. We have access to His grace. In Philippians 1 and 6, it says, Being confident in this very thing. When you know, you'll have confidence. When you know and someone says, Are you saved? Are you going to heaven? And you won't say, I hope so. There will come a moment when you step from just being a believer, and you have to be that, to being a believer, a knower that's a believer. Because that knowing will bring confidence. I am confident in this very thing. What very thing? That he works all things together for my good? Absolutely. But look how he tags the end of it. Not only is he working all things out for your good, it says that I am confident in this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, he's not finished with me yet. He's still completing it. I'm still letting him. If you're not letting him, he's still wanting to complete it. So if you'll begin to let him, you can use this scripture and put it on your refrigerator. I don't know. I'm not a tattoo guy. I don't wear ta have any tattoos, but I guess if I was real confident in a tattoo guy, I might tattoo this on my heart and say, through it all, I'm confident. Through the trials and trips, I'm confident in this very thing. God has not forgotten me. God has not quit on me. God has not been unseated. And so through it all, I'm confident in this very thing. Whatever, bring, whatever it brings, life brings, I'm confident. That God has not forsaken me, and he is working all things for my good. And the work that he began in me, he will complete it. Let's stand on our feet. God, we love you today, and we give you glory in this house. God, we ask you, Lord, to just let this word, Lord, become knowledge. Let this word become a revelation. Let this word, as we leave, that we have an understanding that when we know, then we stand different. When we know, we fight different. When we know, we do different. So God, help us stand, help us fight, help us do for your glory. Lord, for anyone that's in here today that does not know you as their Savior, may this be their defining moment that we know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever, anybody and everybody that would call on his name would not perish but have everlasting life. God, with a simple prayer today for that one or that whoever may not know Christ as their Savior, or, or maybe they're struggling and they're trying and they've been just feel like a loser, right? They just feel like a loser, Lord. Would you just right now just give them victory as they grab this word with an understanding of not just believing it but knowing it down deep in their knower that you're working all things for their good. This hard time, you're going to turn it around. You're going to work it for their good because they love you. So, Lord, for those that don't know you, love on them. Speak to them. If they're at home, if they're at work, if they're just browsing the Internet, if they've landed on us today, may their heart be changed, may their life be changed, may they leave this half hour, this 40 minutes, God, knowing who you are and not just believing. We give you praise. With every head bowed and every eye still closed, maybe you'd just be bold enough to say, Pastor, you're just talking to me today. I, I, I need to be a knower. I, I, need to, I need to quit fretting. If that's you, just slip your hand up. I need to quit worrying about everything and living in my past and decide that that didn't define. Thank you. Yeah. That doesn't define me. 
man, I've been ransomed out, baby. The, the chains have been loosed. The, the gag has been taken off of my mouth. I can proclaim the liberty of the Lord, the glory of God. I can have full access to the Holy Spirit. I've been justified by faith. My past will not and does not define me. If you needed that moment this morning, right, I love that. And maybe you'd be bold enough to say, Pastor, I wasn't saved. I've kind of been playing. I've drifted away. And for those that don't know what that means, that means backslid. That means you're not in right relationship with Christ. You've been playing, dabbling, whatever it took that drew you away. Those little things, that's the small foxes that spoil the vine. Those little things have taken you further from God than you wanted to be. And if that's you, would you just slip up your hand and say, forgive me. Just slip up your hand and say, Father, forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Father, forgive me. God, we praise you today. Lord, we love you today. My goodness, we love you today. Lord, let us leave here knowers because when we know, we're different. When we know, we see things different. When we know, we're impacted different by the hard times because when we know, we know that you're faithful. So God, for any person that just said, Father, forgive me, God, just bless them right now. Let them have peace and comfort in their heart. Let them have peace in their mind of knowing who you are and who you are to them, that you love them. You love them in spite of anything in their past. You love them moving forward, and you're capable, you're able, and you've made yourself available. Lord, let us not leave with our head down, but our head up and our shoulders back, looking to the heavens from which cometh our help, looking to the hills. God, we love you today. We pray pray great blessing over this congregation this week, great blessing over their work week, great blessing over this day, this hour, that their life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody give God a hand clap of praise? Real quick, we have a baptizing at 11, uh, after the 11 o'clock service. If you were wanting to be baptized, decided today you wanted to be baptized, just jump in line. We'll have you. We'll have everything ready when you get back. Uh, if you needed to go get ready or whatever you need to do. So after 11 o'clock service, uh, let's not forget Wednesday nights at 7. It has just been amazing uh, what God is doing. We're running. I mean, it's just been crazy, honestly. It's been, you guys have just, I don't even know what to say about Wednesday night. Uh, it's just been a great time in the Lord. Sunday mornings have been knocking it out of the park. You guys have been coming hungry, receiving the word. And even when you're quiet, I know you're chewing because you don't talk with your mouth full, right? And so we just bless you. Uh, first time guests, if you would, first off, thank you for being here. But if you'd fill out a card and go to our guest services corners or that for your uh, station on your way out, Uh, They would love to give you a gift for being here. And also, if you'd like to get connected to this ministry or just find out what's going on. See, I don't want to get connected, but I want to know more about what's going on here. Miss Katie will meet you to my left, your right. She'd love to introduce you to some ministry, tell you what's going on, and get you involved if you'd like to. We love you guys. We give God glory in all things, right? God is doing a great thing. Know that. Know that God is doing a great thing. He works all things together for our good. Let him work it for your good. Amen. We love you. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Online family, thank you.